Hi, I'm Derek Castillo. And I'm Matthew Cardona. And we're filming a documentary covering the rising costs of college tuition and what the government can do to help students. Education are essential in today's economy. Any government organization would love for more students to go to college because it's essential to the growth of a nation in general. But with the rising cost of tuition in the last three decades, it has not been, it, there's a big barrier for students to come to college. And with that rise in tuition, it prevents them from wanting to attend college in the first place. So there's lots of government assistance out there, but it has not met the rising cost of tuition within these last three decades. So for a nation to grow and truly prosper, you would want all, if possible, of its people to attend a college or higher or get some form of higher education because it is essential for the growth of that nation. Now, I understand there's gonna be those opposed to got more government assistance for college students and we'll take a quick look at their side of the story. So most government assistance comes from FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. But the problem with FAFSA is a lot of people have issues when trying to log on or create a profile and it just gets lost in the mess of all the, uh, the things that online. And uh, another thing is that it's, it's largely individually based, meaning that the, in the program looks at each and every student to determine their financial need and that depends on how much uh, aid they receive for college. The problem with this is that it's, it runs off taxes. The FAFSA spends roughly just over $300 billion a year on this program. But the problem is that the, it, since it runs on taxes, that means that the middle class largely ends up paying for it. And since it's individually based, middle class families usually don't receive as much aid as they would need to, to pay for their uh, sons and daughters' colleges. So to counter this, if we were to put more money into FAFSA, more, more, uh, more tax money and, and uh, government spending into FAFSA, we would, we would eliminate this problem by helping, by helping the, the middle class receive more, more aid for their uh, sons and daughters, as well as the, the lower, lower class. So here we have a graph of average college tuition since 1980, where we have private institutions in red and public institutions in blue. Um, so for private institutions, there's a clear price almost almost tripling, and public institutions also going up quite as well, almost doubling, only in the past, uh, from 1980 to 2015. And this is a clear rise and and obvious indication of how the prices are going up and it shows here is a graph hello this is david michael castillo and he's a student here at the university of texas at el paso i'm going to ask him a couple questions regarding the rising cost of tuition so dave how do you handle being a good student with the rising cost of tuition books and everything that goes in to being the good student that you want to be? Uh, that's a really good question. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a peer leader, so I always tell my students that your, your school is your absolute number one focus. If you're working too many hours, talk to your manager, see if you can work something out so that you can focus your priority on being a student. Um, but again, a lot of times there's, uh, our, our school, our university is really known for having a lower tuition rates compared to most of the big tier one universities, but yes. still, at the end of the day, it's 3,000 some odd dollars that you gotta pay for a semester. Uh, so it, it can be tough for me personally. Um, it's there's there's a lot of scholarship money out there for really obscure things. Like I remember even seeing um, a scholarship that was for people over six feet tall. There's 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 strange scholarships all over the place that a lot of students don't take advantage of. Uh, but for, for me personally, I, I uh, do rely on uh, one scholarship, and uh, thankfully I have I have uh, uh, parents that, that uh, are blessed enough to give me the the, the capacity to go to school and. And, and to succeed in, in everything I do here on the university, but uh, if and, uh, 
especially for books. And I also use uh, the job I have here on campus. It's super, super convenient to classes. Uh, it's very uh, conducive to my, my learning, to my experience, to my uh, overall role as a student. And I use that, uh, that, that money I get from the job to pay for books, to uh, I'm a history major, so I have to buy like 10,000 books every yeah. semester. So, <laughs> so there's more, more, more techniques like that. Cool, cool. Well, thank you, man. Of course. Appreciate it. So, this is Lauren Rodriguez. She's also a student here at UTEP. So, Hi. With the rising college of tuition prices, books, everything you need to attend college, how do you handle still being a good student, making money, and everything you need to do to, to go to school here? Well, I didn't start being a good student until this semester, but um, I fortunately receive a lot of financial aid money about, I get the Pell Grant and the Texas Grant, so that's, that's a good amount of money right there. So that covers tuition and that also covers books, but if you misspend that money like I did, then um, you have to get a job. And currently I have a job here at UTEP. It, Unfortunately, it's not one that deals with my major. I'm a statistics major. Um, I work in the dorms, and so it is easily accessible since it is on campus, and my manager is very lenient when it comes to hours because she does understand that um, I am a busy student. So um, that does help pay for my books, for uh, you know, printing, for my meals, for you know, all everything that goes into the lifestyle of a college student, so, okay. yeah. Well, thank you very much.